it's heart wrenching to be out here and think about this is where they laid to rest. It's also heartwarming. It's a place to, to remember. You know. So I was assigned to missing persons in the summer, July of 05. And I was assigned to adult missings. And then I was given three reports on three, three of the girls who had backgrounds of drug addiction and prostitution. 2006, it was a retired detective who was hired back on to work in the cold case. So I consulted with him and I said, hey, I think something's not right here. And so he did some other background and we were like, this is just too quiet. And so that's when I started making a list. And then the list kept growing as I started discovering more um, reports that had been on file. I told the detective, um, I don't know, maybe we have a serial killer. And I said, I just feel uneasy about their disappearances. And we would just put up intel on suspects that could be, you know, linked to uh, picking up prostitutes. Um, it was truckers. It was just an intel from all over. FBI would give us flyers. Everything about them was similar. I mean, each one has their unique story to them and their background but they all hung out in the same area rather. A lot of them did time together, um, and again, a lot of them were friends. The ones that were found here, we still have a couple girls that went missing prior to. We don't know if they're related. Mm -hmm. The chances are they may be. But um, as far as who was found on the West Mesa, it's to 2003, 2004 girls. So there's two girls in 2003 and nine in 2004. Well, anytime a bone was found, say out on the Mesa or some remote area, uh, Homicide, they were well aware of all the girls that were missing. They would get a hold of me and say, hey, they found human remains or a bone, but you know, it could take several months or years to find DNA. So I was approached on, I think it was February 2nd, that a femur had been found. And then I said, okay, well, let me know if you get results back or when you do. And then two days later, I was told that the first identification had been made and it was Victoria Chavez. And I remember saying, here we go. And so that's when I just thought that this is the beginning of finding the girls that have been missing. I think it was just confirmation of, you know, the effort. And it's been a team effort, you know, of all the work of trying to find them and trying to find answers. But then it's the reality of we're here now and we're finding them. Um, and then, of course, that led to having to let the families know. She was tiny, small, very petite. Good mom, she liked to cook, she liked to sew. She enjoyed being around her sister all the time and she loved being around her son. She went missing in 2004. I just want to find out who did this to her and why. I just want it to be over because I'm living in the shadows because I'm always afraid of everything. If anybody out there knows what happened, let them know. Give us the piece we're looking for. So our job is to find the missing pieces. And so if we can focus on these girls were loved, each one has a unique story, their parents want answers, the other parents need their girls back. So instead of the focus sometimes being on, oh, it's the high-risk lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How about we focus on the person that's perpetrating them? This is somebody who had access to the women. This is somebody who was very comfortable with the place that he buried the, uh, the girls, um, had concealment. Um, it's somebody who prays, who's out there, who's a predator. They know that a lot of times that the girls aren't reported missing right away. They know they're very vulnerable because they're addicted to their drug and they're desperate to make their money. And so it's somebody who takes advantage of that. I would like to reach out to the girls that were working during that time. Was it someone they remember um, driving in the area? Do they remember a vehicle? Do they, did they experience anything? They, were they able to get away from somebody in a situation that was going bad? Were they victims? 
you know, I think those tips, um, sometimes people hold tip onto tips for a long time, and I think that would be important to reach out to somebody if they have information. Um, we're hoping that information will lead to also finding the next set of girls. You know, but somebody always knows something, and we're hoping that that person, maybe after all these years, will reach out. I think it's important for people to know that of all the, re the remains that were found here, that there were uh, n no injuries that the Office of Medical Investigator or the forensic anthropologist could identify. For example, these women weren't shot. There was no evidence that, that they were shot and killed um, or blunt force trauma, that kind of thing. And so this complicates the case and makes it a little harder to solve because we don't have these clear indicators of what actually caused their, their deaths. I, I don't want these cases to be forgotten. Um, again, there's still eight girls that are missing. Um, I think it's, not I think, I know it's very important to be able to try to find them because they may give us answers to the girls found in the West Mesa. It's difficult because life goes on and it's important that we don't forget what happened here. And it's important that when we see, again, normal life going on, that if somebody is out here doing construction, if they see something new, if they find new bones, if they find something suspicious, that they let us know. You know, this, this is really important for the families for the investigators, but this is really important for Albuquerque. You don't want no other parent to go through this again.